Yum, yum. Hello, fondue lovers. Cloud rendering is clearly where it's at. So let's take a peek at how to set up Moto for rendering on Rebus Render Farm, the cloud rendering service of my choice. I've been using it for years. Really like it, have used it on tons of projects and spent a lot of money there. Hearing me, Rebus? I expect some free credits for this tutorial. Alrighty, the first thing you need to do is go over to the Rebus website. I'll link to it in the description down below and on the Pixel Fondue site. There you need to create a login. So create your login, you give it your username, Captain Awesome, or whatever it is you use, and get that all set up because you'll need the login immediately after installing the software. After you've got your login set up, head on over to Let's Go. If you've got a PC, download the Windows version, and if you have an Apple Watch or iPad or whatever it is Apple is making these days that passes for a computer, blah, 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 download the Mac version. Once that's downloaded, run it. It will ask you for your login right off the bat, so aren't we happy we took care of that already? Type in Captain Awesome and your password, and we'll move on to the next part going to install the Rebus software. It's essentially some control software. It's a service that uh, runs in the background on your PC. It also installs plugins on any software really that Rebus supports. So Moto Maya, whatever you've got installed, and it'll install some uh, scripts and default paths as well. It actually goes really quickly. Almost too quickly. Like it can't possibly be this easy quickly, but it is actually pretty easy. If you hover over the little system tray icon, you'll get a good idea of how many render points you have left, what jobs are going, etc. And if you right click on it, you can take a look at the render jobs, see what's uploading, see what frames are downloading, see what uh, renders are in progress. And you can also get to the control center, which is the uh, web page that you're going to use to control all of your queued render scene. Back at the Rebus website under My Rebus, you can get to the control center. You can also buy new credits there under payment or check your invoices, edit your profile, all that stuff. But the control center is where pretty much everything happens. That's where you check all the scenes that you've queued up, see what's rendering, what's downloading, and uh, how much money you're spending. So <laughs> let's take a look at actually adding a scene to the render queue now. All right, back in Moto, I've got a scene of a delicious leopard grouper swimming back and forth and moving its big fat mouth up and down. Uh, probably endangered, but delicious nonetheless, at least so I hear. So the renderer, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a resolution 1280 by 720 and frames 1 to 300. We've got AA samples of 32. We've got global illumination. We're kind of thinking we're all ready to go. Here are our uh, final color output. We've got a path all set up. You have to have a save path for all render outputs. That includes the alpha output, which typically doesn't have a default save path because typically Moto just uh, does an embedded alpha in the ping or whatever, EXR or whatever you're saving. Rebus, however, is having none of that. You cannot have any render outputs with no path. Every render output has to have a path or Rebus will not allow you to submit it to the render farm. It's really just a fail safe to make sure you don't spend a bunch of money rendering and not have any images saved, right? So. The plugin will help you out with this and remind you, if you go up to the top, you've got a Rebus Farmanizer uh, drop down there and click Rebus Farmanizer. And we've got this little window that comes up and you'll see that it's got a couple of, well, it's got a lot of info there. Basically, it says your render settings. You've got what your render camera is, how many, what frames you're rendering, but it's also giving you some errors. Output render alpha has an empty output path. So you've got to fix that before you can render the scene. So you can also press smart check and it'll basically, again, it'll check all your settings to um, throw up if there's any errors like uh, missing render outputs or you haven't saved the scene, it will not let you upload. So see, it's not gonna let you upload until these errors are taken care of. So I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to take care, you know, it says anti-aliasing might be high. It has some basic uh, render you know, warnings in there. If you know what you're doing, and you want your AA at 32 samples like I have here, then don't worry about it. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, then you can follow Rebus's guidelines to make sure you don't overcrank too many settings. But I'm gonna put something in the render out, uh, output here and I've got a path there now. And then I need to save the scene right up there at the top, AR, please save your scene before exporting. So I've gotta save it uh, one more time before exporting to lock in that render output path. And once you hit smart check and all those errors are gone, you're ready to go. Warnings are okay if you're good with it. I'm good with anti-aliasing. I'm good with the G, uh, brute force GI. Not rendering on V-Ray. That's fine. So I click upload. 
So now that you hit upload, if you take a look at the little icon in the system tray, you'll see a little blue swirly line. That means the scene is uploading to Rebus Render Farm. What's nice is uh, the software actually saves the Moto scene into the Rebus directory in your in your user folder. Just it saves a copy of it, and it actually copies the texture files there too. So uh, it has two copies of it. It's not writing over anything in your actual project direct directory. Your original scene is safe. Um, so it's uploading the scene and then you can actually take a look at all the scenes you have active in your render queue by right clicking and checking render jobs. It'll show you all the jobs that you've already completed. I have a ton here that it's just kind of going off the top of the screen, but it'll say the name of this, uh, this leopard grouper scene and it'll say uploading. And if you head on over to the control center, you'll see that scene is uploaded and you can just click the play button to start rendering. It's going to ask you where you want to save the files. You can select a specific directory or just go to the default directory, which is in your Rebus folder and save your user folder, uh, which is fine as well. Uh, you can take a look. I've got 100 nodes rendering right off the bat. 100 computers are cranking away. That's all the frames there that are currently being rendered. Nice to have 100 computers rendering at once, isn't it? That's the beauty of a render farm. If you click the little refresh button over here, you can see the frames that have already been rendered. There's a bunch of alpha, uh, that uh, alpha output there, and there's some color ones. So already this thing's already going. The computers they have are extremely fast, and you've got 100 of them going at once. So in no time at all, it's done. I spent 7.19 render points, so maybe 10 bucks. I uh, can see all the thumbnails there on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you can see the frames that are completed. You know, how long they took, how much it cost you. You can also check and make sure there's none that are skipped over there as well in case you need to go back and pick one up. And here we are in After Effects. There's our sweet, sweet leopard grouper swimming along, all the frames imported from the farm. They all downloaded very quickly. Rebus, when it first came out, had really slow download speeds, but it's actually quite quick now. And it'll pick up and it'll continuously like look for frames that it may have missed while downloading and it'll fill in any blank uh, spots in the sequence if it finds any. And there it is, the delicious uh, leopard grouper. Actually, you know, I have no idea if it's delicious or not. It probably tastes terrible. I mean, look at that thing. It's so ugly. It's like a carp. All right, enough of that. Like I said, when Rebus initially installs, it'll install on all compatible apps. So here we are in Maya, which I also have installed on this computer, and Rebus Farmanizer. Uh, the dialog box looks pretty much just like it does in Moto. So if you use multiple apps, Rebus is a good choice. It's uh, just a similar workflow across all apps. <laughs> Yum, yum!